in the morning, I used to say, how may I serve? And as I went for my walk, I would just say, how may I serve? How may I serve? And I just continued to, continued to say that. What he said was that if you say, how may I serve, the universe works in ways to conspire to serve you, to serve the world. So I'm going to walk to the hotel room, and I'm walking. I'm saying, I'm so insignificant, I'm so insignificant. And then I felt Wayne for the first time. And he said, get out of your own way. <laughs> How do I know it's really you? You have to give me a without a doubt sign to let me know it's you. So I continued to walk, and I said, how may I serve? How may I, how may I serve? And he said, you're already serving. I said, how may I serve more? So I walked to the hotel room, and there was something very itchy in my shirt. I didn't know what it was, so I reached in to get it, and I took it out, and it was a sticker that somehow got attached to my shirt. And let me say, on the bottom of the sticker, it said uh, Disney World, and I had not been to Disney World, so that you can understand, this was not in my shirt before. On the sticker itself said W, and then E under it. We consciousness. That was the W E that I had on my sticker. Now what the we consciousness is, the interconnectivity of everyone and everything, and how what one does to oneself, how it affects everyone else. It talks about the compassion for all of life. It talks about our divinity and so much more. And I'm sitting on that bus, and there's one seat available on the bus, and in walks Serena Dyer, and she sits down next to me. I said, Serena, I'm so sorry to hear about your dad. Um, please make sure to ask him to give you without a doubt signs to let, I'm going to start to cry, <laughs> to let you know that he's with you without a doubt. From minute one, from day one, I need signs. If you want me to get through this, if you want me to get through the, this process of losing you, I'm going to need signs starting now. So come on, let's go. And I got this sense of calm and peace that kind of took over me. And I felt this voice saying, I don't know what you want to call it, it was just like a thought that I had that really wasn't kind of my own thought that said, pull up your podcast on your phone. Now, as God is my witness, I did not know that I had an app on my iPhone called Podcast <laughs> because I had never used it before. But I scroll through the page, like, oh, there's Podcast, click. And I type in Wayne Dyer. The first one comes up. And it's a young man, it was about 15 minutes, he had called in because his mother was dying of cancer. And my dad talks to him for about 15 minutes about finding peace, being in the present moment, not going to the what happens when I lose her, what happens when she dies, but just trying to find joy and meaning in the present moment. And I felt a lot of comfort from listening to that, but it wasn't quite the sign that I was looking for. Um, until the very end, the last 30 seconds. I have no idea why, but on that podcast, my dad said to this man, now for everybody listening, if you could take a moment to send my daughter Serena love. <laughs> She's going through a hard time. <laughs> I like jumped out of bed and I was like, dad, are you really here? And he was like, yeah, I'm really here. And I was like, I know that I'm asleep right now, and that this is dreaming, but this isn't dreaming. I was like, this is real life, this is so real. This isn't dreaming, right? And he was like, no, you're not dreaming, this is real, I'm really here. And I, um, and then like the skeptical side came out of me and I was like, okay, if you're really here, then I could touch you. And he said, so touch me. So I grabbed both of his forearms with my hands and I could feel them, I, like, I remember feeling his hairy arms in my hands and they were, his arms were warm and, <laughs> and I, uh, and then I, you know, I dropped the skeptical side of me and I just embraced him and it was just so real. And we talked. Driving to the appointment and as I'm driving to my office, a car cuts me off and it said Dyer 1 <laughs> on the license plate. Karen like took on the persona of our dad. You see her, she's this like small, petite, soft-spoken woman and she's screaming at us. <laughs> screaming at us, exactly how he yeah. would when we were little kids and we yeah. were going to be late for school. We came in and she's like, Hi, uh, okay, everybody here. Let's go! I mean, Wayne is saying, he's, he's here, he's here, he's saying, let's go, let's go. I was like, Dad? Yeah. And she was like, he's so, he's so intense, he takes over my body. I said, I'm so sorry. We go into the room, and Karen was really, like, acting, sounding like him, which, I mean, they've got to be a foot and a half apart in size, and <laughs> totally different voices and energy and all that, and 
she just took on this energy. And we all sit down, and, and she kind of fixes her gaze at me. And she, she goes, you're pregnant. <laughs> and I go, no. No, I have a five-month-old. I just had a baby. So you're probably picking up on the baby. And I kind of thought, like, well, that's disappointing. And Karen says, fireworks, fireworks. He's talking about fireworks. I took a pregnancy test, and sure enough, <laughs> totally did not remember this because the baby should have been named Margarita because that is how she came about. It was <laughs> not intended, honest to God. And her due date was the 4th of July. <laughs> So that was a total, total shock to me because she, my dad, through her, was telling me something about myself that not only did I not know, I didn't even think it was possible. We don't die. Um, we just leave one room for the other, and that's a room we're all going to. And when we elevate our energy, we're able to, to find the people in that room and to communicate with them. And that's what Karen has been able to do for us. And Karen calls, and I grab the phone, and I walk in the shower, and I, hello? While I'm grabbing my toothbrush to come back out to finish getting ready, and she goes, are you in the shower? And I go, he can see me when I'm in the shower? <laughs> and she was like, yes, but it's not like that. It's not like, I was like, okay, because I conceived the daughter, as you know, I'm like all freaked out, like now I need to meditate, I need to calm these thoughts. <laughs> anyway, she said, he just, he, he's, he, he just wanted you to know that he's there. And since I had met her and had that reading, my energy, all of our energy um, really shifted and became lighter. And it became not just the knowing that I could um, have a relationship with Karen that allowed me to continue to have communication with my father, but also the knowing that he was really there. Even more um, crazy than the shower, July 1st, I was in labor. And a midwife comes in and she says, it's time to push. And Sage says, wait, wait, um, before, before you push, uh, Serena, um, Karen's calling. Should I answer it? <laughs> and I said, answer it. And the midwife was like, who's Karen? And I said, it's my dad. And, and she was like, what? She said that dad was like screaming at her, call Serena, call Serena. But don't call Serena, because she's in the middle of something, so call Sage. But this call really is for Serena. Yeah. And Karen was like, OK, Wayne, I'm going to call. I don't know what I'm calling to say. And Karen gets on the phone with Sage and says, is Serena in the middle of something? She says, oh, yeah, she's a little tied up right now. <laughs> and Karen says, is she about to have the baby? And Sage said, yeah, she's about to push. Well, he said, put the phone by Serena's ear. Yeah. Daddy's there. Yeah. Daddy's yeah. there. He says, call Tracy now. It was 6 o'clock in the morning. I said, Wayne, it's 6 o'clock in the morning. Contact her now. Contact her now. I said, oh. So I, I text her. I said, I'm so sorry, but your dad's here. Can, I, um, can we talk? She responded immediately, and she said, yes, exclamation, exclamation, exclamation. So I called her. First thing, I said, before you say anything, um, he's saying, he can hear you, but you can't hear him. And she said, oh my god, I just woke up from a dream just now and my dad came through, and I was screaming at my dad in the dream, saying, why, can't you, why aren't you listening to me? Why aren't you listening to me? And he says, I am now able to feel my connection with the highest, most pure and loving component of the we consciousness. When I merge with the totality of all there is, I am no longer attached to my ego state. Why would you want to hear from me from such a limited viewpoint? for the vital message of peace on Earth. <laughs> it is in the best interest for everyone to receive this information from the grandest perspective. And he said, where I am now is not the afterlife, but is the continuation of life without the restrictions of the physical body that bound me here on the Earth plane. One minute I was confined to a physical shell, and the next I was free as I stepped into this pure state of infinite love. For the last several years of my earthly existence, I yearned to reach this level of awareness and was both surprised and delighted when I achieved this goal in an instant. And please spread this message to everyone who will listen. We are all one in love, and everything else is just an illusion. While many will join forces with the darkness, an even larger number will become aligned with the energy of the weak consciousness to heal the planet. Yeah. <laughs>
and each individual will make the choice as to which direction to take. And he said to me, now's the time to do what you came on earth to do. I immediately knew what that was, what that was to promote peace on earth. <laughs> Angel blessings to you. Angel blessings to you. Thank you. Thank you, Thank you very much.